is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 7th. I'm Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the overview of housing support services. On the panel today, we have Stephanie M. Jones, MPA Director of Innovations with DDA, and Diane Dressler, Senior Associate with Life, Community Life Resources. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar by computer and phone. If you have trouble hearing, you can try switching by clicking on the appropriate button in the webinar panel in the audio section. There's a handout um, in the webinar for the webinar, um, and um, you can find that in the handout section to the right of your screen in the panel. Um, we are recording the webinar and it can be accessed on YouTube and we're gonna put it on a dedicated housing page on the DDA website. So before we get started, we're gonna do a really quick poll just to find out a little bit about you. Um, so let us know um, what your role is in participation for today. So we have five options, um, family member, CCS, service provider, um, housing support specialist. Um, so we're just going to um, take a few minutes to um, do that poll. I did not put other, I don't think. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to close the poll. And let's see who's with us today. All right, 25% said family members, 25% said CCS, 46% said service providers, and 4% said housing support specialists. So just wanna thank everyone for participating in that poll. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Stephanie Jones, Director of Innovations. How are you, Stephanie? I'm well, good. Afternoon, everyone. I, I can't see my slides, Donna. I'm Stephanie Jones, the Director of Innovations for DDA. I want to welcome everybody this afternoon. And I was going to, um, I'm going to cover with you the agenda and DDA's commitment, and then I will introduce Diane to continue our training today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about DDA's housing priorities. Go back one more time, real quick for me. And um, housing support services and the overview of what they are and how they will assist with the process of um, registering for the DDA rental ass um, assistance subsidy. Next slide, please. DDA is committed to, de to develop quality, affordable, accessible housing for people with disabilities in safe locations where they can access support services, transportation, employment, and recreation throughout their lifespan. We will do this by increasing awareness of housing issues experienced by individuals with developmental disabilities with the internal structure as well as external partners, stakeholders, and the community at large. We will work in partnership with Money Follows the Person to increase housing options for individuals with developmental disabilities in Maryland. We will promote and promote the understanding of the link between self-determination and housing as a critical part of people being able to control their own lives. And next, we will I will introduce you to Diane Dressler, our housing support specialist expert and housing expert with um, working with DDA. Diane? Thanks, Stephanie. Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Dressler, as we said. I'm a consultant who works with the Developmental Disabilities Administration on their efforts to um, create more affordable and accessible housing opportunities for people with disabilities. I've been doing housing work with people with disabilities for about 20 years now. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, and also have uh, 
uh, about 30 years of experience working with DDA. So I hope to help um, the DD community be able to implement these um, wonderful initiatives that DDA is putting together to support the housing choices of people who are receiving services. Next slide, Donna. So the, the first few slides we're presenting here are the waiver definition. So we provided the exact language from DDA's um, community pathways, community supports, and family supports waivers uh, for you all to see. Uh, housing support services are a new service that are available in all three of DDA waivers. Uh, DDA's waivers. So that's a wonderful thing. And the language is the same through all three. Housing support services are time limited um, and they help people be able to achieve their housing goals and overcome any kinds of barriers that may um, they may face along the way that um, need to be addressed so they can secure and retain their own home. Um, and it includes housing information and assistance, housing transition services, and housing tenancy sustaining services. Next, Donna. So housing information and assistance um, in the waiver includes these 10 different activities. Um, so the specialist can help a person um, understand housing rules, help them search for housing, apply for housing programs, both those programs offered by DDA and anything that may be generically available in the community. Um, it can help people, once they find a unit, be able to um, determine whether that meets their needs uh, and go through any kind of process necessary to be able to access that unit, such as applying for it, getting the paperwork together. Um, the, the housing specialist can also help people request any kind of reasonable accommodations or unit modifications that might be needed to help the person be able to use the unit, just like anybody would be able to who does not have a disability. Um, it'll help people understand their responsibilities under a lease, find resources for security deposits, moving, furniture, all of those kinds of expenses that we all um, have when we when we get a place to live or change where we're living. Um, it's also going to help people um, get assistance with resolving any kind of issues that may crop up during their tenancy or homeownership. Next slide, Donna. Now, housing transition services will um, help a person. Um, identify any kind of barriers that they would have to accessing housing or to retaining their housing. Um, and it's also going to help people create a housing, an individualized housing support plan um, that will have long and short-term goals, that will have strategies to address uh, any kind of um, activities that are going to help a person achieve their goals and it will that plan will also identify any kind of natural or community resources natural supports or community resources that will help people achieve their goals that individualized housing support plan will be incorporated in the person-centered plan so it is not a separate plan it is a a component integral to the entire pcp next slide please and then once a person obtains housing, um, it's not over. That's actually when important work begins to help a person maintain their housing and be successful, either as a tenant or as a homeowner. Um, so again, uh, people will be provided education with on their lease, on community roles, on being successful as a tenant. Um, they will be assisted in, in developing and maintaining good relationships with their property manager and with their neighbors. Um, the housing support specialist will be there to help people identify any kind of um, issues that may jeopardize continued housing and then to resolve those issues, um, to, to catch things early if there may be a problem and have a resolution to them. Next slide, Donna. So people 
qualify for housing support services if they are an adult age 18 plus. So even though these services are available in the Family Supports Waiver, um, the waiver participant is not eligible for the service until they are age 18. Um, and of course, the person needs to be enrolled in one of DDA's three Medicaid waivers. And they also need to have a housing goal identified in their person-centered plan. Next slide, please. So housing goals can be incorporated in the person-centered plan when a person uh, states that they would like to change where they're living. Um, perhaps they'll say that they want to move from their family home or group home to renting their own apartment. Um, perhaps home ownership is their goal for the future, whether they are living with family or in a group home, or perhaps maybe they're renting and they want to go sort of that next step and uh, pursue home ownership. So all of those kinds of goals can be part of the person-centered plan. Um, examples of housing activities in that plan may be applying for housing resources. So a person may want to apply for a housing choice or Section 8 voucher. There may be other um, rent subsidy programs that are available for people to apply for, including a new rent subsidy program that DDA will be launching very soon, um, which we'll tell you a bit more about. Um, example, another example may be um, supports for successful tenancy, including um, ensuring that people are having good relationships with their neighbors, are prepared for their housing program recertification. Um, assessing the need for reasonable accommodations or modifications, helping people make those requests, and following through with the housing provider to make sure that those requests are addressed and, if approved, are implemented. And the housing activities can also include helping people maintain their home um, and assessing the need for a change in services should a different service or a change in services be needed to help someone be successful in their home. Next slide. So a housing support specialist is someone who is specially trained to help people navigate housing issues. Um, the housing support specialist is the person who's going to be working with someone in waiver services to help them create that person-centered housing plan. They will help somebody locate housing, find resources to make housing affordable and accessible. Um, they'll help people maintain housing. They'll help with communication with uh, landlords and property owners or anyone else who may be connected with the person's housing. Uh, again, they'll help with reasonable accommodation and modification requests. Um, they'll, they'll work with the community um, the coordinator of community services to help people access support services to help them be successful in their home and then work with people on their house budget um, and help them with strategies to make sure their rent gets paid on time, that their utilities are paid and maintained, um, and any other kinds of household budget issues that might be necessary for someone to be successful. Next slide, please. Housing support specialists are people who provide housing support services. And DDA has um, authorized providers um, within the community throughout the state um, to be able to provide housing support services. So they say those agencies need to have the experience and expertise in housing opportunities for people with disabilities and their staff need to have completed training that's required by DDA to be able to provide housing support services. So we want to make sure that both the agency is authorized to provide the services, has experience and expertise in doing that, and that their staff have specialized training to make sure that they have the skills and knowledge to be able to help people be successful. Coordinators of community services do not provide housing support services. Uh, the coordinator will refer people who have a housing goal 
to housing support service providers and will help them select a provider. Uh, the coordinator will work with the housing specialist to plan for in-home services and address any kind of challenges that may come up during someone's tenancy or home ownership. And then the coordinator will monitor the provision of housing support services to make sure that all of those necessary services are, are being implemented. And, and if there is a barrier or a challenge to implementing it, will help the housing specialist address overcoming whatever that barrier may be. Next slide, please. So how can someone access housing support services? The first step really is to talk with the coordinator about the person's desired housing situation. If someone states that, um, you know, they, they'd really like to get their own apartment, they'd really like to have their own home that they own, um, they're really looking forward to being able to cut the grass and plant flowers and all those things that people can do. That's when um, the conversation can be started about changing someone's housing situation. So first, that discussion is very important. Then uh, people need to make sure that the coordinator includes a housing goal in the person-centered plan including objectives for obtaining housing support services. So that would be really the first step in the plan in uh, achieving housing goals. So next, the person will obtain a list of housing support service providers from their coordinator. Um, and then they will get assistance from their coordinator or family in choosing a housing support service provider. So. Um, the process for selecting housing support service provider is very much the same as selecting a provider for other services through DDA. Once um, they have selected a provider, um, they would, in, or a potential provider, they will interview them to make sure that this is the right fit for the person. Um, and then once chosen, um, they'll need to make sure that the coordinator knows who the housing support service provider is. Next slide, please. So this is a list of housing support service providers who have trained housing specialists. This is as of this month. Um, so there are a number of staff at the agencies listed on this slide who have um, completed, successfully completed the training for housing support specialists and are ready right now to help people with their housing goals. Another class for housing support specialists will be held be starting the end of April and will go through into May. Um, so additional housing support specialists will be, um, have completed the training by the end of the may and we'll be able to provide the service and we will make sure that uh, updated information is available for um, people receiving services and their family and providers and the coordinators to make sure that everybody has a list of those housing support service providers who are have the capacity to provide the service next slide please so the next couple of slides are back to waiver language. Um, and this just provides you all with the information about the staff requirements uh, for housing support specialists um, when they are pro um, provider directed. So this particular slide is the staff requirements for provider directed services. Um, so you can see the requirements for staff as well as the training requirements that those staff need to complete. Next slide, please. And this slide provides information about um, housing support service professional requirements for self-directed services. So people who are self-directing their services can receive um, assistance from a housing support specialist who has the requirements that are listed on this slide, and they are very much the same uh, in content as the requirements for provider-directed services. 
Next slide, Donna. So that's the information on this services, and we have plenty of time to take your questions. Um, we thought that there would be lots of questions about this new service, and we wanted to give plenty of time for you to be able to um, ask those questions because of the number of people who are signed on to this webinar, which right now is 625, um, we will take as many questions as we have time for. Um, if you have questions that we are not able to get to, um, those questions can be uh, responded to by Stephanie Jones. Yes, we'll do a uh, F FQA and post those questions um, on there. So to answer the first few comments um, at the, in the question box, the handout again is in the handout section, which is located on your right hand side below the question box. So you can download that. Um, and this will again be posted under the housing ses ses session in the DDA um, website as well as YouTube. Um, so my next question after that is, um, can the residential provider also be the HHS provider? Um, sure, as long as it's, it's indicated in the plan as a separate service. Um, HHS is not um, part of residential service, um, service definition. So as long as it is a separate service in the plan. Let's see the next question. Um, they, this is the biggest hurdle, CCSs and housing services. They do not know it's available. Is it required training? So I'm assuming they mean, they mean the training, Diane. So um, everyone who is um, a contracted HSS provider in DDA services will has been getting um, information sent to them um, regarding the different trainings as they come up through MIH. So just kind of keep a track of your um, email um, for those MIH. And as well as um, we, we can maybe share them as well on the DDA website so you can see them. Well, Stephanie, if I might add a little bit to that. Sure. Um, MIH is Maryland Inclusive Housing. And it's an organization that um, was established a couple of years ago and is dedicated to helping people with intellectual and developmental disabilities um, to be able to achieve their housing goals. And they, and they work to create more resources as well as provide information to people about housing opportunities and resources. Um, so MIH is the organization that is conducting training for housing support specialists at this point. Um, there are more providers who have been um, approved by DDA to provide the service than was on that list that we gave you, but they may not have had their staff undergo the training yet. So that's why we think we will have a longer list of agencies um, in coming months. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Diane, I'm going to let you answer this next one. Um, it says, we knew SSMD brokers and could not convince the person um, left SDS. I'm not sure what that stands for. Not entirely willing. They give up. So I'm not, I guess that's just a statement, not a full question. Um, um, so, um, yeah, if there's a question um, about that from um, from the person who wrote that question, we're, we're happy to answer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they're trying to ask. I'm not sure. Okay. Does housing support specialists get included in the detailed service authorization for billing? or DDA pays the, hold on, the HHS agency separately. Does the housing support specialist 
certificate included in the detailed service. So it's a service on the PCP, which means it will be in the individual's budget. So it, it's it's a, a regular DDA. It gets paid um, billed like any other DDA waiver service. Um, the housing support service agency will make sure that the specialist is tracking their time that they're spending on uh, housing issues for someone and then they will bill um, for that separate from other, you know, separate and documented separately from other services. Okay, so it says, this is a comment. Uh, one of the biggest barriers to people seeking independent living is the support needed to pay their monthly bills. And as Diane covered, that's one of the um, roles that the HSS person will assist with. Correct. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm sure there's more questions. Um, I'll, I'll expand a little bit on that um, okay. bill paying issue because that has been a question that's come up um, as we're implementing this service. So the housing support specialists will not pay bills for people but they will help people access supports necessary for paying their bills. And they'll make sure that the person's budget is um, a viable and that they are, um, have the supports to remain within their, their budget. Okay, Diane, this is for you. If a house is privately owned by an individual landlord and not a DDA, approved agency um how does this impact a potential tenant who needs tenant who needs in-home supervision or overnight care so i think that's several questions in one <laughs> yeah so um, <laughs> um if a person has um interest in renting from a landlord who is not a DD provider. So it's this is not a group home situation. This is a, a separate private landlord. They are able to do that with the support of the housing support specialist. I think the challenge, of course, is affordability. How am I going to be able to pay the rent? So um, that will get into the housing support specialist helping people find resources for affordability. And um, there are a number of resources that are currently available for people, um, including um, the Section 8 vouchers. They're also called um, housing choice vouchers. There are also um, the HUD 811 Project Rental Assistance Program for people with disabilities. There's a Weinberg Apartments Program for people with disabilities. Uh, there's a Money Falls the Person um, Bridge Subsidy Program that some people with intellectual and developmental disabilities may be eligible for. And then DDA will be launching a new rent subsidy program. We're not going to provide all the information about that program in this webinar today because we don't have time. However, we have webinars coming up that will give everybody the information that they need to understand what that affordability opportunity will be for people who are receiving services from DBA. So that more information will be coming on that. But yes, the housing support specialist will help the person find those affordability resources, apply to housing, um, figure out their plan for making sure that their rent gets paid and the, making sure that they have utilities. They'll help people get to all that paperwork together that's needed when they apply to rent an apartment. There's a lot of paperwork and documentation needed. So the housing support specialist will be there to help people through that process. Um, and then again, they'll be there to make sure that people understand their obligations under their lease and that they have the supports they need to be successful. And I think the second part of that is if someone is willing to accept um, a subsidy or a voucher that owns a private home, um, they can go through whatever process that is um, with um, the housing authority and um, DHCD. 
right, Diane? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. I am looking for my next question. Hold on just a second. Okay. Access of Medicare is also oh access and ability Medicare is also a um, is on the list, I guess for, as a provider. So we'll make sure we um check on that and add it to our next training. Oh, so somebody not mm -hmm. listed who has yes. uh, trained staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I thought we got everybody. I apologize for that. And what is the name of that agency? It says access and ability. Access and ability. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. How do we become a trained site? Where do you sign up? So I the, guess that uh, means for HHS providers. Yeah, to become a provider is my assumption mm -hmm. about that question. Um, a, a while ago, I don't know how many years ago, uh, maybe three years ago, DDA um, asked that all providers indicate what kinds of services they want to provide, either continue to provide or if they wanted to provide some of the new services that were in the DDA waivers, um, they could sign up to do that. So as part of that process, a number of agencies checked off housing support services as one of the services they would provide. Um, if an agency did not undergo the authorization to provide services process back then, they can do it now. Um, they would submit, and this is, I guess, more for Stephanie, but DDA has a process um, for providers to be approved to provide additional services that they're not already providing. And um, I believe there's an application for that. Is that correct, Stephanie? Yeah, and you can look on the DDA website under um, providers. It's all on, on the DDA website, but I also think they were wondering how to sign up because this is the second, the next question is, how do we sign up for the training? So if you can give the uh, contact information and I guess we can um, um, post it as well when we post this recording for MIH. Right, yeah, you'll need to contact MIH um, and I guess Stephanie, you'll go ahead and, and give people that. Information. Yeah, I think it's the, I have to, um, I will send that out. I will, um, for everyone. I want to, I don't know that um, I didn't have the website to post in the chat, but I'll make sure we put okay. it in our F FQAs. Yeah. Good. But if you Google Maryland Inclusive Housing, it'll come up. <laughs> And they do have a uh, a calendar, uh, sort of an events calendar on their mm -hmm. website. So you might be able to access it that way as well. It's worth looking. Someone just comments, Jay, this is an, an excellent turnout. Um, it is. Again, the slides are in the handout section. Are there providers of service in all regions? Yes, there are. And there are train there are providers with trained staff in every region. So there may be some providers who do, who have do not have trained support specialists yet. Um, but those agencies that do do have trained housing specialists um, are available in all regions. And some of the providers are providing housing support services statewide. Um, again, um, we will give you, you can um, Google the MIH, Maryland Inclusive Housing, and go to their website to get 
um, signed up for the HSS trainings. And it, we will also put it when we post um, the information when we post this recording. Let's see, what is the time limitations? This seems like an ongoing service in order to maintain housing. It is. Until the person, it probably, it, it is. I would say it will continue as long as the person continues to, to support call their mm -hmm. housing. And for people who may already be renting or maybe already own their home, um, I still think it is a good idea to consider having housing support um, or having a housing goal of maintaining housing. And um, the housing support specialist can engage in activities to help the person continue to be successful. Okay. Um, the next one is how do housing support specialists refer people to the subsidy, I believe is what they're talking about. Um, the rent subsidy program um, will be, be able to be accessed through the social serve uh, waitlist network when it opens and we'll do more trainings as Diane says, but that um, the waitlist will not open before May 1st. I have a thought, Stephanie, about the housing support specialist training um, mm -hmm. MIH is offering a class that starts the last week of April. Those classes are offered once a week for four weeks, and they are about um, seven hours of training in that day. So it's a uh, very in-depth, pretty intense um, training for staff to become a housing support specialist. Um, if the class fills up, so because the, the training is um, very in-depth and, and kind of lengthy, the class size is limited. Um, so if that training fills up, uh, I know that MIH will um, go ahead and schedule another session, you know, based on demand. So if you All can't right. get in this April class, don't worry, another one will come. Right. Um, again, the handout is below. You can download it. Um, our HHS, HHS providers available um, in community living. Um, housing support services is a waiver service. Um, so if you are in one of the three waivers, it's in all three waivers. So it is a service in all three waivers. Is this for a service for anyone who wants housing support in general? or only if you want the DDA subsidy. Anyone who wants housing support in general. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can we describe the new rent subsidy program, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a training that, I believe that's the training on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, am I right, Stephanie? I don't want to give inaccurate information. No. I think we oh, have no, the one on Monday. We do have a training coming up on the DDA rent subsidy. I, I can't remember the date. I apologize. But um, that will be available for, you know, people receiving services, families, providers, uh, CCA, anyone who's interested in understanding um, what, about that program. Um, so we will have training coming up about that. The program um, is, uh, so I'll just give some real basic information. Um, it is going to be available for people who are currently receiving services through DDA or who are in crisis resolution category on the DDA waitlist um, to be eligible besides receiving services through DDA, people need to be age 18 and above, so there is no upper age limit. Um, the rent subsidy 
works very much like a Section 8 or Housing Choice Voucher in that the person will receive a subsidy authorization and they'll be able to go search for a place that meets their needs and a place that is within the payment standard for the program. So the training that we will provide um, later on um, in April or May will give information about what those payment standards are um, and other eligibility information. Um, people need to be, uh, the household income needs to be at or below 50% of the area median income for where the person wants to live. So that will be different if someone, someone wants to live in Montgomery County than it would be for someone who wants to live in Somerset County. So there, the area median income differs in different areas in the state. Um, so that's basically how the program will work. It is what we call a tenant-based rent subsidy program. Um, if someone meets the eligibility criteria and um, is approved for the program, again, they'll go search for housing that meets their needs and then rent payment will be made on their behalf by Maryland's Department of Housing and Community Development. People will need to pay 30% of their household income toward their rent and utility. So people do have a, a rent payment requirement, but it's affordable. You know, it's 30% of income, which is really the affordability standard for what folks should be paying for their house. So that's the subsidy program in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Um, the next question is H. HSS available to um, those on the wait list. Again, it is a waiver service on all three waivers. So you would have to be receiving uh, DDA waiver services. Um, the next question, can a parent or guardian request the services if an individual in services is not 18? It's not 18, yes, but they are, they're homeless they are homeless. Uh, according to, to the waiver definition, people need to be age 18 and over to receive the service. Um, Stephanie, what do you? Yeah, it, it's um, 18 is, the age 18 would be required. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they could um, still reach out to DDA for additional assistance. Um, for crisis stabilization if the person is homeless uh, to your regional office. If the parent wants to lead the family home to their disabled adult when they pass, is this something they work with HHS to do, to set yeah. up? Yes, it is. Um, it was indicated that services are time restricted in what way or manner. I don't think you said that, Diane. So I'm not um, sure what they're referring to there. No, but if um, but people will be able to get the slides and mm -hmm. the services um, available through housing <laughs> services are mm -hmm. listed. They're all listed there. So. Um, I think that'll be a good resource for people to, to look back and if they have questions about if something's covered, it should be on that list. Okay. And who can take the HSS training? Um, people can take the HSS training if they are working for an, a provider who is approved to provide housing support services or if they are providing housing support services to people who are self-directing. Okay. Are there a waiting lists or other places that individuals need to sign up outside of DDA um, for affordable housing, especially in Montgomery County? There are, very quickly, there are a couple of different resources. Um, the Montgomery County Section 8 waitlist is always open. 
It is operated by an organization called the Housing Opportunities Commission of Montgomery County. So um, if you Google that, their waitlist link will be there and the application can be filled out on their website. Um, the housing support specialist will need to place people on the waitlist for other housing programs that are managed by the Maryland Partnership for Affordable Housing on that social serve wait list. Um, so people need to be placed on those wait lists uh, moving forward by a housing support specialist. Um, currently providers and coordinators have been able to put people on those wait lists, but, but um, in moving forward, DDA has made the decision that they want the housing support specialist to do that. We are having a meeting with uh, the coordinators and housing support specialists on Monday. That's what that training is on how they will work together and make all of that stuff happen. So um, um, getting housing support services is really an important step in helping people get on wait lists for housing programs. Thank you. Um, are you aware of any funding for housing for people with DD to buy homes? Um, the state of Maryland does have a mortgage program for people with disabilities. It is called Home Ability. It is operated by the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. If you Google, um, you know, if you go to the DHCD website and in their search box put home ability, the information will pop up and it's got everything you need to know about um, accessing that mortgage program. Uh, it is better than mortgages that people can get on the conventional market. So um, it's certainly worth taking a look at to see if it's a good fit. And housing support specialists will be an excellent resource in helping people figure that out and access that program. Okay. Next question is how are housing housing supports different from residential services? You want me to answer that? Sure. <laughs> okay. Housing support services is Diane described, and it's also in the handout. It is a um, periodic service for to help with linking people to outside um, resources to live on their own. So it's not for group homes or other type of um, facility based living, but it's a service to assist people with living out out on their own in a private privately owned or a, apartment living type residence. Is that does that cover it, Diane? I think so, yeah. Okay. What kind of assistance, including financial, is available for someone who wants to purchase a home? Again, um, I think you just gave that information. Mm -hmm. And your, if, um, again, the, the first step is getting a housing goal in the person-centered plan, and then a referral can be made for housing support services um, and then you know that housing support specialist will be the one who can help answer all of your specific questions. Um, I think we answered how the training about the training for housing support services. Um, again housing support services is a service on the um, within all three DDA waivers so it is is paid for through the waiver. Let's see, it was mentioned that DDA rent subsidy program will be being launched. Is there more information to come? Yes, there's more information to come. How do we find out who is in, who is the HHS person at each agency? I think if you just, like you would do for any other service, reach out to the agency and they will assign you someone. Um, is this a new service for individuals available now or is it enrollment period? H, um, housing support services is a current service for people 
um, in all three waivers. So all you have to do is work with your CSS and request that service. It says um, this is someone whose son is available, who is DDA eligible, but hasn't started receiving his funding yet. So you would need to wait for um, his services, his funding to begin to access housing support services. I'm a CCS. I will be able to enter housing support services into the revised PCP like normal, like a normal service, service request. Exactly. Absolutely. If you, um, it says, will DDA provide rent supports? If so, how will how will that work with Section 8 vouchers? Um, if you already are receiving a Section 8 voucher or other subsidies, you are not eligible to receive the DDA um, rent subsidy. Well, H. Well, housing support services, I think they meant because they put HHS, uh, be indicated on the SDS budget. Are you familiar with that, Diane? Self-corrected services budget. Um, I'm not familiar enough with how the self-directed services budget is laid out, um, but I'm going to assume that like any other service that has sort of a line item in that budget, for, you know, uh, for the support broker or um, whatever other um, services being paid for through the self-directed services budget, you know, so like any of the rest of them, housing support services will be in the budget. Correct. Um, for that. That's good. Mm -hmm. This is how does housing support specialists refer to DDA supplement funds for housing. I'm assuming you mean the subsidy, and that is, again, um, they will be able to do that once the waitlist opens up through the Social Serve uh, website. For recertification. Uh, Go I ahead, just Diane. wanted to add a little comment to that. The we've already done a webinar for housing support specialists on the new DDA rent subsidy program. So they've received the information they need to be able to help people access that program. Um, so they're going to be your go-to um, for the information on the program. But again, we will have uh, webinars with general information for people um, interested in how that's all going to work. There's a next question. I think I'm going to put question. Um, let me see who the asker is. Um, regarding recertification, I'm going to put that because um, for recertification support, does HSS complete the research package? And I don't think that we have any, that would be something for someone in our provider relations. And so I will write that question down. Oh, I think and put it in our about app. housing recertification. Most um, oh, rent okay. programs have a housing recertification requirement, you know, like a voucher program, you have to recertify every year. Mm -hmm. For Maryland, uh, for DDA's rent subsidy program, that's also going to be the case. So yes, the housing support specialist will help the person with whatever is necessary to complete that research process. Okay. Thank you for that. Sure. My apologies. Are there are HSS trained in all counties individual housing programs? Um, I'm going to say yes and no. So uh, they have been trained on the programs that um, we're aware of. Sometimes counties might have little kind of boutique programs for people with disabilities that are not widely available, um, but might be um you know county specific and eight housing support service specialists have been trained on how to get that information from the county thank you uh, that's going to be one of their tasks 
The next question, will the waiver allow for yearly rent increases? I want to make sure I'm clear and emphasize that the rent subsidy program is not a waiver service. We're, today we're talking about housing support services, how to get people linked to um, different avenues if they choose to look into living independently and um, outside of group home and other facility-based services. So the rent subsidy is not a waiver. Um, is not a waiver service. Let's see, does this program support access to federal voucher program administered by Baltimore County for those for those plan participants of DDA self-directed services residing in Baltimore County? Yes. The answer to that question is yes. Do you have to add this service to your PCP? Yes. Yeah, that's really the first step. That's the first step, <laughs> just like with any other DDA service. We are interested in home ownership. I, um, does the service help with this? closing cost grants, et cetera. Yes, the housing cool. support service person could help you look into different uh, funding, correct? Absolutely, yes. And uh, during the training, specialists are provided some information on how to find resources for those kinds of things. Okay. Um, you said housing support service was generic housing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I'm not sure you said. Um, housing support and, specialists can help people access generic resources for housing. So uh, when we say that, we mean aside from the DDA rent subsidy program, which is coming up, the housing support specialists can also help people access other resources that are available to the general public, such as um, a housing choice voucher, um, you know, there might be some project-based voucher programs available around the state that uh, people might be able to apply for. They'll help people be able to um, figure out whether living in a low-income housing tax credit um, apartment community would be affordable for them, and that's a generic resource. So, um, there are other resources above and beyond DDA's rent subsidy program that people would be able to access, and the housing support specialist will have the knowledge to help people do that. Thank you. All right. Um, when, <clears throat> excuse me. When will DDA rent um, program be available? Again, the wait list will open May 1st through the Social Serve website, but you don't have to wait until then. If you are interested, if the person is interested, and living um, on their own, they can ask for um, housing support services to be added so that they can look at everything that's available to them. Um, can a client receive housing and still have open case in foster care? I would not know about that. Um, I don't either. I don't, I don't know anything about that, I'm sorry. But I, I'll say this, um, between um, the, the coordinator of community services and the housing support specialists are going to work closely together. Um, so if, if the issue's related to anything housing. So um, I would think that kind of situation is something they could work on together to try to resolve. Thank you. Um, again, housing support services is a a waiver service. So just like any other service, it is part of the individual's budget. Um, um, and I think we've answered this, that there'll be additional information coming out regarding the DDA rent subsidy program. Um, or, yeah, rent subsidy program. 
what does a provider agency need to do to provide or be licensed to provide? Um, let's see, hold on. To provide the housing support service, um, work with your um, provider relations specialist if you would like to add that to your contract. It says, I saw one service by specialists. Is it find and obtain resources for making housing affordable? Can Let's you read see. that again, please? <laughs> it says, I saw one service by specialists to find and obtain resources for making housing affordable. Can you elaborate? Parent of young adult in Montgomery County with its outrageous rents. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, they are. So yes, the housing support specialist will be able to help people sign up for programs that can help make housing more affordable, um, such as the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, I gave information a little while ago that the Montgomery County um, Housing Choice Voucher wait list is always open, so people can still get on that wait list. Um, and the housing support specialist will be the one to help people figure out what other resources they are eligible for, what other wait lists they can get on, um, any kind of other applications they might be able to um, put in to be able to get uh, something that's affordable. Mm -hmm. um, how early can a teen apply for housing supports? Again, you have to be 18 or older. Let's see, can housing support services be billed for services provided to an individual entertaining community living residential services or is um, or is the only individuals who rent or want to purchase their own home? It is for it is not to help someone find a group home. It is for people who want to live independently. Are the funds usable for any rental location? Uh, it, the subsidy program. It will be a subsidy. So if that uh, landlord or management agency will accept um, subsidies, then yes. Well, um, and may I add, Stephanie, if the rent is within the payment standard that oh. we've established for the program. So um, there is an upper limit to the rent in every county. Um, and uh, so unless there are extenuating circumstances of some sort, the that would be the maximum rent for an apartment that someone could live in and use the rent subsidy. Correct. Um, is this service available to someone that already lives on their own? Yes, if they feel like they need additional support um, in maintaining housing, absolutely. Does this access, does this access existing funds for housing or is there separate funds for these individuals. I'm assuming they're talking about the subsidy. Um, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so, separate funding. It's not waiver funding. It yeah, is a separate, separate from waiver funding. Right. Is HHS services available in LTSS? I believe so, yes. I know they were working on it. They were working on it, yeah. <laughs> I believe they were working on it, but so yes. Um, oh, someone asked, are CCS is required to take this training? No. Um, as far as CCS's knowledge of the service, is there a barrier to the service being used? Um, but we do encourage you just to stop there. We do encourage you to look for our upcoming training. 
where we talk with the CCSs and housing support specialists together um, so that you know how to um, interact with one another and who's responsible for what roles um, in this process. So again, that training is Monday. Um, I believe you can still sign up for it. And if you're not able to make it, all these sessions will be recorded and posted on PDA's website or YouTube page or whatever you guys do. What is that, Stephanie? It's YouTube. Okay. <laughs> YouTube and the DDA website. I see some people wrote some, I see my chat thing. So as soon as I finish with the question section, I'm coming to you, the people who wrote there's some questions in the chat. How do I get signed up for the training again? Yes, ma'am. This is Donna. Um, I just want to let you know it's 105. Oh, okay. So we, we need to stop. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So for the questions we did not get to, um, we will respond to them in a document that will be posted um, on the um, DDA website um, for um, further. So um, let's see, I'm going to look in the chat real quick just to see if it's something quick in there. I can. Yeah. Oh, no, that's it. Oh, okay. Um, so I thank everyone for their time. I'm sorry for going over um, those two or three minutes. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel please feel free to contact me at stephanie.jones. Um, Donna, can you put back up our contact information on the website? And the number two is after jones at maryland.gov. stephanie.jones, number two at maryland.gov. Thank you all. And I believe we are done. Thank you, everyone.